Okay, ready? Good. So. Okay, great. Okay. I think a good way of talking about creating a school is starting to think about dualities. The Zen of starting a school, so to speak. So the first duality I want to talk about is the yin and yang of not only what you put into the school, which is what much of you will be thinking about, but also what you don't allow in, what you don't let in. There's a lot of things you don't need to have in schools that people think you must. Segregated adult and children's bathrooms, for example. Public address systems, bells. You don't need to have those things. And schools have a different feel if you don't. You want to keep it simple. Complex structures beget very simple behaviors, like the military. Or simple structures get complex behaviors, as Sir Giovanni said. Or as Charlie Mingus once said, it's easy to make the simple complicated. True genius lies in making the complex simple. So keep your school simple. Don't overthink it. Don't overload it. You want a school that isn't just about student learning, but it's also about adult learning. Adult and student learning taking place in tandem. As Michelangelo said at the very end of his life, I am still learning. People have to do something to the things they want to find out about. They need to alter conditions, as John Dewey said. People need to find things through invention and reinvention, as Freire said. Be thinking about that, about having a school in which kids are altering conditions and thinking about things and reinventing things, yourself included. In using technology in schools, people think about consumption of technology, and they don't think about production through the use of technology. The beauty of production is that kids are inventing and making things. And the other benefit is that, of course, if they're producing, they're also consuming. If you're consuming, you're not necessarily producing. So if you're producing, you get both. If you're consuming, you don't. We want to use your head, and we want to use your hands, and you want to use both well. MIT's motto is manze manus, head and hand. Making things, thinking about things, using head and hand. Tinkering is the great fun that a lot of us have experimenting and taking things apart and fixing machines and the like. Tinker with your school and make a school in which adults and kids are tinkering with everything that they're doing physically by making things and also thinking about how they're scheduling, how they're doing everything. Let people mix it up, keep mixing it up, keep it interesting. There is still a role for storytelling. I am doing it right now. Socrates did it in 400 BC with people under a tree. It's okay to tell stories sometimes. There's definitely a role for that. It's interesting when you've got a good storyteller. Don't avoid that completely. We just don't want it to be 100% of what happens in schools, which is what's typically going on. I had a guest to our schools once, and someone said to me, how is this different from most schools? And for some reason, I just said, this is different in that in most schools the students are doing the listening and the adults are doing the talking and in our schools the adults are doing a lot of the listening and the students are doing the talking. When you're doing a new school, someone once told me, someone who had a great effect on my life, Vito Perón, said to me, when you're doing a school and you're getting ready to do a school, there's two things you need to do. Of course you need to do it well, but you also need to describe it well. Doing a good school is really important, but describing it, you need to have a narrative. You need to know a way to describe that school to prospective parents, prospective students, prospective teachers, prospective funders, prospective authorizers. Very important. Prospective peers in the education community. So you need to also be uncovering material, not just covering the material, like students doing field work, getting in the muck and mire of things, getting all involved in it all. So it's not just covering the subject, it's actually revealing and uncovering the subject. There's great power also in collaborative study groups. I went to law school. I've asked quite a few people the following question. If your life depended on getting through law school and you could only do one of the following three and none of the other two, would you go to the classes, would you read the cases, or would you be in a study group? Almost everybody has said, be in a study group. Most recently, Someone who's now a U.S. senator, as a matter of fact, said to me, be in a study group ten times over. Engagement. 
you want everybody to be engaged. You want the adults to be engaged. You want the students to be engaged. You find meaning. Meaning comes from being engaged. You want people to be perplexed in the good sense of being perplexed. The great engineers that I know, the great educators I know, the great artists I know, they're obsessed with how to do it better. They're perplexed about what's not good enough and how to do it better. That's a good posture to take because perplexity and the paradox of perplexity has a a healing effect in that when you get to that next level and you figure that thing out and you have that aha, uh, you feel some satisfaction and that inspiration has motivated you and you've taken the invisible and you've made it visible. You've exhibited what you've come up with. Public exhibitions are absolutely critical in schools for adults, for students to publicly exhibit their work and their thinking, just like I'm doing right now. And then you go to be perplexed about the next thing that you're perplexed about. As we get to the end of this, I want to talk a little bit about stability and churning. Having been principal of a 350-year-old high school, I found that people really, really valued stability. I think stability can be overemphasized at the expense of losing churning and mixing it up. Of course, you don't want it to be unstable, but you don't want it to be stuck. There has to be a lot of oxygen. Einstein said it was easy to discover the theory of relativity. All I had to do was ignore a few basic axioms. If you're creating a new school, think about that. Ignore a few basic axioms. And remember, it's not just what you put in, it's what you let in. And remember, hard on the content, soft on the people. And remember, work hard and have fun.